Welcome to Electron Online. In case you were wondering how we came up with the equation in the previous video for the moment of inertia of a circle, well, here, let's go ahead and try to calculate it. So here we have a circle, it has radius r, and we want to find the moment of inertia relative to the origin. And notice that the origin is right at the center mass of the circle. Now we can do that by drawing a small area element. So let's go ahead and draw a very small little area element, a very small thickness, and we'll call that a DA. And the DA is at a distance r away from the center of the circle. So we use a small r as the variable r. The big r is simply the radius of the circle, and DA is the Oh, and that, maybe I should put that somewhere else so it doesn't get confusing. And the dA is this little area element. We can define dA as follows. dA is equal to the circumference of that, which is 2 pi times the variable r, the small r, times the thickness of that, and let's call that a very small little dr, a very small thickness dr. All right, then we can say that the moment of inertia relative to the origin is going to be equal to the integral of the distance to that area element, which would be r squared, we have to take that distance squared, times dA. And since dA is defined as 2 pi r dr, and of course we're going to integrate from 0 to the radius of the circle r, so this then becomes equal to the integral from 0 to r, we have r squared, and dA is now going to be written as 2 pi r dr. We can pull the 2 pi outside integral sign, so this becomes equal to 2 pi times the integral from 0 to r of r cubed dr. And of course, that we can integrate rather easily. That becomes r to the fourth over 4. So this is equal to 2 pi times r to the fourth over 4 evaluate it from 0 to r. When we plug in the lower limit, we get 0, so all we need to do is pl plug in the upper limit, so this becomes equal to 2 pi times r to the fourth divided by 4, which is equal to 1 half pi r to the fourth. And again, just like we did before, we can pull out the area of the circle, so this becomes equal to 1 half times pi r squared times r squared, this being the area of the circle, so this is equal to 1 half times the area times r squared, which, if we replace the area by mass, as we suggest here, then that becomes the moment of inertia of an object that is like a cylinder that has mass equal to m. So it would be 1 half m r squared, or in case you use the area, it's 1 half area times r squared. So that's the moment of inertia of a circle rotating about at the origin. So how do you find the moment of inertia of the circle relative to the x-axis or relative to the y-axis? Well, we realize that there's perfect symmetry between rotating the circle about the x-axis or rotating the circle about the y-axis, which means that they must be equal to each other, which means that I rotated about the x-axis must equal the moment of inertia rotated about the y-axis and we also know that the sum of the two must add up to this, that the sum is equal to the moment of inertia about the origin. So since they're equal to each other, that means I can replace one by the other. So the moment of inertia relative to origin is therefore equal to I sub x plus I sub x, which is 2 times I sub x. And of course, that is equal to 1 half pi r to the fourth, and therefore one of them, i sub x, should then be half of that, or one quarter pi r to the fourth, and so that's how we find the moment of inertia of the circle relative to the x-axis, which is equal to the moment of inertia relative to the y-axis, because of symmetry, and we also found the moment of inertia relative of the circle relative to the origin, and that's how it's done.